You know, when I read the book of Judges, I read a sad story of a group of people that were called the children of God who rode this unholy roller coaster ride up and down, up and down, up and down. Tragic. The sad thing is it's not just the book of Judges. Many times it can be us as Christians where we're up and down. We're having great victories and great defeats. We're having intimate time with God and they were blowing it, living the life of Samson. And it's not the life God's called us to, amen? He's called us to one of intimacy and proximity with him that's perpetual, consistent. The question is, how do we get there? How do we get to this place where we're not doing things like separating ourselves from worldly things, which is a good thing to do, but have you ever like done the act like I'm going to fast, I'm not going to watch this, I'm not going to, and these are good things to do, but you can do those things and still not be right with God, right? It's called legalism. You know, we went down this road of extreme discipleship with a program years ago, which I loved, and Ty taught um, last week with the Nazarite bound. There are great exercises to take, and repentance is part of sincere relationship with God. Um, and, and it's good exercise, it's good counsel, but in them by themselves, it, you become under this heavy burden. And then when you abstain from those things that are worldly, you feel good about yourself, which is dangerous to feel good about yourself. It's called pride. Because all of a sudden, I feel really good that I've abstained and I'm doing the Christian things and, and you build yourself up for a big fall. So how do I come to this place where I'm not like in the book of Judges, but more like the disciples after Pentecost? And as I'm listening to the Judges series online the last couple months and loving everything I'm hearing, it's solid, good stuff. And I'm, I'm going, but there's a capstone to all this and it's called the gospel. Without a constant reminder of the power of the gospel, you will succumb to legalism and you'll be inconsistent in your endeavor to be a Christian. You with me? And it really comes down to this, daily being reminded, are you ready? That God really loves you. Because it's easy to forget that God loves you. You know the passage in scripture where James says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. This is a key moment for some life in this room. You're gonna, you're gonna love this because it's gonna like really impact you. You can hear an exhortation like that. You can hear it under law and this is what it means under law. It means if I pray, if I worship, if I abstain, then I'm drawing near. And if I do that, then God will draw near to me. That's not true. See, the reality is you can't draw near to God like that any more than you can make yourself fall in love with somebody. It's a gift. You can't make that happen. You can, however, resist the moment. It's the same with drawing near to God. None of us choose to draw near to God. It's him that draws us. Under grace, drawing near to God doesn't mean we initiate. It means we don't resist. There's a big difference. One's law, one's grace. One produces pride and calamity. The other one produces humility and the fruit of the Spirit. And it's something we have to do all the time. How do we get free from doing right in our own eyes? We begin to drink in the gospel on a daily basis where we say, God, I don't do righteousness in faith in Christ. I am righteousness. You know the passage so well. It's it's a scripture, if you want to know what the gospel is, here it is. Are you ready? If anyone, 
And you can put your hand on your chest right now and say, that's me. Yeah. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us this message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. If I really believe that I don't do righteousness, I, my father, when he judges me, he judges me through faith in Christ, and I am righteousness. If I believe that, then my conduct will be a reflex of walking like Jesus walked. It won't be something I have to do. You ever try to live the Christian life like, I'm trying to live holy. I'm trying not to be angry. I'm trying to forgive. You can't do it. You can fake it for a little while and then give the world another thing to mock, but you can't do it. Dad, you're back in the book of Judges, up and down, up and down. But man, when you get into his presence and, and, and that spiritual amnesia goes away and you go, oh God, Dad, I forgot you love me. Not for anything that I've done. You just love me because you love me. It makes no sense to me that you love me. Why would you love me? I look, I see in the mirror, I remember the past. I look at this wicked heart. Why would you love me? Because Christ, that's it. And, and, and the thing is, you can know it yesterday. It doesn't equate to walking in it today. That's why Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Take the cup, take the bread. You're going to need to preach the gospel to yourself all the time because the world's going to come and lie to you that drawing near is something you do versus I'm drawing you and you're not resisting. You're not going to say, no, I, that can't be true because after all, look what I've done. It's not what you've done, it's what he did. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is finished, man. And, and, you, and you get into his presence and, and it's just like, God, there's no place I'd rather be than here with you. If you need to like give up your phone and get a flip phone for a while, do it. But I promise you that won't be the answer though. You'll just get a flip phone and then go buy an iPad and use that instead. <laughs> that's really. So some of these disciplines, it's kind of like you're working out, that's great. But if you're still going to Dunkin' Donuts, it's not going to work out. Right? So exercise is a good thing, but you have to also draw near. Not meaning you, it means stop resisting that he loves you in spite of you. <laughs> and you get up every day and you just go, God, I'm just here. Thank you for drawing me to you. There's, there's this song, lyrics to this song I've been chewing on for like the last six weeks or so. Listen to this. I love when you pull me away. Far from the world and close to your face. There's no place I'd rather be than here with my father singing over me. So pull me a little closer. Take me a little deeper. How high I love to linger, just you and me. you can come a total mess of hypocrisy and just say, God, I forgot you love me. I forgot. I lost sight of the gospel through all the exercising and I forgot about the food. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. Drink in the gospel. And you'll find that what's righteous 
is a reflex in your life. And you'll find that the thing you're saying, oh, I'm just having such a hard time doing that and stop doing that. You'll find that like, there's no struggle anymore. I stopped resisting the love of the Father being lavished upon me. Now it's melted my heart and heart. And now living for Jesus is just like breathing. The only person I want judging me is God. Because he judges me with grace and mercy. And as soon as I start to judge myself or have other people judge, I go back under the law and I become inconsistent. And in our society, we're so busy. Even for God, we're too busy. When he says, just come sit with me. Just come listen to me. Let my peace wash over you. Let all the fear that you're drinking, and let me purge you from that. You've forgotten that I'm almighty. You've forgotten I'm on the throne. You've forgotten I've got it all worked out. You're worried about many things, and you need not worry, says the Lord. He's the father. We're the kids. When we rest in that truth, we stop striving. Closing thought. Some of you are familiar with the passage in Scripture, Zechariah 3. Zechariah has a vision, has, he has eight visions in one night, and one of them where he sees Joshua the high priest there before the angel of the Lord, Christ. And then Satan is there pointing his filthy garments. And Joshua is there and he sees this, and it's such an amazing passage. Can I read it to you? It's just so good. It says, he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan. Satan was standing there at the right side to accuse him. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. Is this not a man, a burning stick snatched from the fire and now Joshua was dressed in filthy clothes as he stood before the angel of the Lord. Now this is the high priest, covered in filth. And he said, take off your filthy clothes. And then he said to Joshua, see, I have taken away your sin. And I will put on fine garments on you. And then he said, put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him while the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord gave this charge to Joshua. This is what the Lord Almighty says. If you walk in obedience to me and keep my requirements, then you will, be, you will govern my house and have charge over my courts. And I will give you a place standing among these here. The Lord says, keep my requirements. What did Joshua do? He just stood there. God's the one that removes the filthy clothes. God is the one that puts fresh, clean garments on. All we can do is stop resisting the process of God cleaning us, cleansing us, empowering us. And he says, if you'll just keep my requirements, what did Jesus say the requirement was to live a righteous life? There's only one, and it's believe. Believe, man. Come on, say it out loud, church. Believe. It's like, Lord, I believe that you so loved me, you gave your one and only son to pay the price for my penalty. That's the justice I want, justification, just as if I never sinned. I want that judgment from you, God. But the requirement for me is to, it's not my works. I, I have to submit to the process. And he says, if you'll remain in that, I'll give you authority among these. Who are these? Angelic hosts. Satan was one of them. I'll give you authority in my house. You want to walk in spiritual authority? Submit to the sanctifying work of the gospel. And you'll find a power to walk as Jesus walked. It won't be produced through Bible reading, praying, fasting, evangelizing, giving, all these, all these things that are great things. You can do those things and have no power. Or you can have power through grace and those things are an act of worship. 
Oh, man. I'll go with the latter. How about you? It's like you start walking in that, you look at the book of Judges, and you go, I'm so glad I'm in the new covenant. Oh, hallelujah. It's like uh, the old is gone. The new has come. No longer is anything required for me to do. He's drawing me near. And I'm just, I'm choosing to not resist that. You can't choose to believe, but you can choose to stop resisting. And when you do that, God will draw you into a place of belief. It's not our work, it's his. We give in to him and great things happen and no longer will you be striving. Instead, you'll be knocking down walls of Jericho. You'll look at an application list and you'll say, forgive? Forgive what? I'm free, my soul is cleansed. I hold no record of wrongs. And you won't be bound down with a spiritual cancer any longer. Family of God, I pray that you would drink in the things that you're hearing. The exercises and the diet. They're both important. Do the righteous exercises. Don't forgo the diet of the gospel or you will enter into legalism. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. Come on. It is the gift of God glory. In Jesus' name. Amen.